Hello, and welcome to the fourth episode of the podcast, Simple Enlightenment. My name is Dean Graves. We greet you in the love and the light of the one infinite creator. In episode 3, we explained the overall structure of creation and how seven densities were created as fractals of the eighth density by increasing the amount of free will in each successive fractal. We explained that the foundation for all of the creation that we experience is built upon the manifestation of the distortion infinite energy, a distortion of the archetype love. We also explained that in seventh density, five inherent characteristics of the Creator are delineated, each with their own identity, and from seventh density, the six density fractals were created within their own pod of consciousness according to an inherent characteristic bias, creating racial minds. Upon its creation, Six density assumed responsibility for the creation and guidance of densities one through five. Densities six, seven, and eight are creator being densities, with the honor and duty to create and manage the exploration of the creator through the further implementation of creation while still having experiences and developing unique patterns of consciousness of their own. Densities 3, 4, and 5 are experiential densities, and the first and second densities are foundational densities. The nature of experience is significantly different in each density, but all experiences, regardless of the level of consciousness, retains the founding purpose of creation, which is to provide the one infinite creator with the opportunity to know itself by experiencing itself. The structure devised for the lower densities of creation is to allow consciousness to be a perpetual system, investing itself into the lower five densities and then guiding itself to have experiences at each dimension through self-interaction, learning of itself by alternately serving as the subject or object, and incrementally evolving back to unity with the Creator as the object, as a unique pattern of consciousness. The system of creation is timeless, and always adapting to changes resulting from free will's co-creation of the experiences, while new consciousness is constantly reinvested into the first density as matured consciousness moves through the system. This is comparable to a school system that starts each new school year with new students in kindergarten, replacing the previous year's students that have graduated to first grade, the first grade student that has graduated to second, and so on. Intelligence is the characteristic of the Creator that is emphasized and paired with infinity to create intelligent infinity. The environment of many creations, including the one we experience. Other aspects of the Creator are also paired with infinity to serve as environments for other creations equally as vast and equally as productive as the ones experienced within intelligent infinity. Within the creations of intelligent infinity, all consciousness has unfettered access to intelligence according to its ability to be aware. In other words, intelligence is not contained within a pattern of consciousness, but is potentially available equally to all consciousness, regardless of the degree of free will intoxication, which includes the lower densities. Within the creator being densities, intelligence is immutable but it is likewise reflective of the level of consciousness according to the consciousness's willingness to access it. Eighth density, because it is undiminished from the creator as the object, shares the same intelligence as does the creator as the object. Seventh density is a consciousness fractal of the eighth density and demonstrates diminished capabilities from eighth, but has the same potential to access intelligence as does eighth density. 
as abilities become more diminished in the sixth density fractal, consciousness demonstrates a more focused perspective, which includes a more limited access to intelligence because of the nature of the density, but not because complete access isn't potentially available. As free will intoxication increases in the experiential and foundational densities, consciousness becomes less able to be aware and experience infinity. The restrained perspective of diminishing consciousness is demonstrated in a more directed or limited focus away from the infinite and towards the finite. A good illustration of this is how our own vision functions. When we concentrate on an object and narrowly focus our vision, we do so to the exclusion of periphery objects. Other objects surrounding the object of our focus are still available to be seen, and we may be vaguely aware that they are in our per periphery vision, but their brightness fades. Similarly, the brightness of infinity fades as free will intoxication increases, and we become less able to experience the whole because awareness and access to intelligence become diminished. As free will intoxication decreases, we regain the ability to experience more of infinity with uniform clarity and awareness. A pattern of consciousness's intelligence is in direct correlation to its degree of free will intoxication. The aspect of consciousness that employs intelligence as a function is called the mind, which is a creation of spirit. In eighth density, spirit is synonymous with consciousness, but as consciousness becomes fractalized with increasing degrees of free will intoxication, resulting effects that permit the unique shaping of a pattern of consciousness promulgates the mind distortion into the forefront of experiences. Access to intelligence becomes moderated by the mind's willingness or unwillingness to surrender its perceived independence from spirit. The mind is a distortion of spirit and is synonymous with the ego. The mind of eighth density is identified as a cosmic mind and is virtually unrestricted to the intelligence of the creator because eighth density is the first creator as the subject and an undiminished fractal of the creator as the object. Seventh density is a diminished fractal of eighth density and consequently has a somewhat diminished access to intelligence from eighth density, but shares the cosmic mind to the extent it is willing to do so. Unlike eighth density, seventh density is further subdivided into dimensions and experiences both vertical and horizontal manyness, and so the higher dimensions of seventh density have greater access to undiminished intelligence than the lower seventh density dimensions. Because of this design, there emerges a range of intelligence within seventh density, as it does within all densities below it. Vertical manyness is the fractalization of a density into dimensions with each descending dimension experiencing a slight increase in free will intoxication. Horizontal manyness is the replication of consciousness that perceives its independence from the other patterns of consciousness and allows it to develop uniqueness. The combination of vertical and horizontal manyness has several benefits to fulfill the original purpose of creation, because each horizontally and vertically delineated unit of consciousness is able to create itself through the interpretation of its subject-object interactions with other units of consciousness as a totally unique pattern of consciousness. Sixth density is a fractal of seventh density and one of the broadest ranges of consciousness of any of the densities. It too experiences both vertical and horizontal manyness, but as with seventh density, the lower dimensions of sixth density have less access to intelligence than the higher dimensions. Sixth density also participates in creation with a racially biased mind, according to the sponsoring inherent characteristic but the potential of its access to intelligence remains unconstrained. 
The mind of sixth density is called the root mind, which in the upper dimensions of sixth density is only somewhat diminished from the cosmic mind of the lower dimensions of seventh density, but still potentially able to access undiminished intelligence. The root minds serve as the source of the minds experienced in the soul streams that span the foundational and experiential densities, and therefore it is the root of their formation. The root mind is a racial mind because it is biased or flavored with one of the archetypes of the creator, either inherent characteristic or distortion. The bias of six density root minds serves as a foundation for a higher self and is carried forward into the lesser minds of the lower densities. However, regardless of the flavoring, all consciousness of equal dimension potentially has the same access to intelligence. The mind, or ego, is a distortion of spirit created as the result of increasing the distortion of free will, and therefore it is a creation of spirit. In the experiential and foundational densities, intelligence becomes more difficult to explain because below six density, the mind becomes even more distorted and access to intelligence becomes a variable, not directly tied to the level of consciousness. We will come back to the mind in the lower densities, but now we would like to clarify some things about the environments of the creator being densities. We previously explained that the creator being densities were both an environment and independently perceiving consciousness, which means that eighth density is the all-inclusive environment for creation. Seventh density is within the environment of eighth density, but shares essentially the same environment of infinity. But sixth density is dispersed within the multiple inherent characteristic environments created in seventh density. Every soul stream invested by sixth density into the lower densities is of the bias of the sponsoring sixth density archetype and usually functioning within the same biased environment, but not always. Additional experiential variety can be obtained by projecting soul streams into an environment different from the bias of the sponsoring higher self. Earth is an excellent example of this because it is a raw or love experience functioning within a law or wisdom environment. This is just one of the numerous conditions that make Earth a unique and potentially challenging experience. There are three primary categories of environments that the creation we enjoy offers, and consciousness simultaneously participates in each of these environments according to its perceptual abilities. Consciousness's ability to be aware of the environment while within them is determined by its degree of awareness, which is usually characteristic of a consciousness level. The nature of these three working environments has historically been described as a dream within a dream within a dream. Consciousness may participate with awareness in one or all three of these environments simultaneously but it is unusual for consciousness in the lower densities to be able to participate with awareness in more than one or maybe two of these categories at a time. The seventh and eighth density environment, the third dream, is described simply as infinity, and every consciousness fractal functions within it, much like the outside shell of a Russian nesting doll set. It is possible for consciousness at every level of creation to experience the infinity environment directly but improbable below fifth density consciousness. Beginning with sixth density, the environment earth science has labeled as time-space, or more colloquially, the metaphysical world, is nested within infinity and is the second dream. The environments of infinity and time-space are naturally occurring, but nothing is actually created extracurricular to the environment characteristic of the density. Earth science calls the first dream space-time. As time-space is nested within infinity, 
space-time is nested within time-space, but where time-space is a refinement of a higher consciousness environment, space-time is an effect of first density, the lowest consciousness density. The nature of consciousness's evolution is to evolve from a lower consciousness to a higher consciousness, so we progress out of the exclusive perception of the authenticity of the first density, physical environment of space-time, and into the experience of the sixth density environment of time-space, and eventually the eighth density environment of infinity. The authenticity of space-time simply fades away as perceptions are incrementally modified by higher consciousness awareness, and consciousness becomes unattached to the physical. The experiential density simultaneously experience time-space and space-time, but fifth density's primary environment is time-space, with only an occasional visit at their discretion to space-time. Fourth density is a transitional density because it begins the density with the primary experience of space-time, but as free will intoxication subsides within the density, consciousness begins to transition its primary awareness to time-space. Third density, the consciousness level that the population of Earth still enjoys, is primarily aware of only space-time, but has the capacity to occasionally experience time-space with limited awareness during such intentional exercises as meditation. In the foundational or experiential densities, when consciousness experiences space-time, it is always incarnate in a physical body to one degree or another, depending upon the density. As the creator of space-time, first density consciousness is always incarnate experiencing space-time exclusively during its entire tenure in the density. But second density experiences space-time while incarnate in a physical body, and time-space during the time between incarnations. Third density experiences space-time through a series of lifetimes during which it lives in the physical world, in the metaphysical world, when it isn't incarnate or when it intentionally chooses to surrender attachment to the physical. When a third density person dies, it simply changes its perspective of its environment by surrendering the physical body and its ability to experience time-space. In the lower densities, consciousness never actually leaves time-space, but visits space-time as an analog version of its time-space self. Regardless of the density of experience, the mind always remains in time-space, and when it processes a thought in the foundational or experiential densities, the thought is processed in time-space with only the fruit of the thought brought in to space-time. The cosmic mind of eighth density is indistinguishable from the spirit, so the spirit and cosmic mind function as the same thing, but in seventh density a pattern of consciousness becomes a mind-body-spirit, even though the body of seventh density is not in space-time. The seventh density body is purely conceptual, which is nothing like a physical body because there is nothing that is physical. Consciousness isn't born and doesn't die in seventh density because it never leaves the environment of infinity. It is eternal as long as creation lasts, and yes, creation does have an end. Like seventh density, sixth density is also a mind-body-spirit, but the body is a light body, something closer to being recognizable as physical. In sixth density, there is no distinction between being incarnate and not being incarnate because the sixth density environment is time-space. All that we experience in the foundational experiential densities is either the environment of space-time or, if we exert the effort to become more enlightened, time-space, but we experience them purely via thought. The more attached we are to the physical world's authenticity, the less likely we are to be able to experience the time-space environment. 
Sixth density creates all of the thoughts and experiences of the foundational and experiential densities. Consequently, at its discretion, a sixth density being may inject itself into space-time in whatever form it may desire by incorporating its appearance as a physical form into a thought or thoughts. Ra and other sixth-density beings have walked among the population in physical form in fairly recent Earth history. We'll offer more on this in later episodes. Consciousness says, within the experiential and foundational densities, experience two minds which are identified as the deep mind and the rational logical mind. The rational logical mind is frequently the dominant mind of first, second, and third density, but the deep mind is always available and increasingly gains prominence as consciousness awakens and evolves, graduates to fourth density, and eventually transitions to fifth density, where the design for experience that creates the rational logical mind, which is the archetypical mind, loses sway entirely. From fifth density, the deep mind continues to expand, transform, and eventually integrates back into the source root mind with the fruit of all experience gained through its evolution. The rational logical mind is probably the only mind that first, second, and lower third density consciousness will experience while it remains within the density's dimensions. As consciousness evolves through the upper dimensions of the third density, Space-time doesn't disappear, but its authenticity does diminish, as, do the, uh, as does the dominance of the rational-logical mind. The rational-logical mind remains a part of the experiences of fourth and fifth density, but it has significantly less sway as consciousness increases its dimensionality. The rational-logical mind is an important contributor to experiences while consciousness is attached to the authenticity of space-time, but it was never intended to dominate to the exclu exclusion of the deep mind, as it often does. Because of the rational logical mind, the variability of intelligence below sixth density becomes a significant factor, an important aspect of diversifying opportunities for the creator to know itself. The mind is synonymous with the ego and the perception of separation and is responsible for the process of analogy, which is our ability to choose what we like over what we don't like. The prominence of the rational logical mind as the primary mind is invariably indicative of a greater ego and the emergence of the deep mind as a moderator of the rational logical mind is indicative of a reduced ego. The rational logical mind is the sole source of all pain and suffering or joy, particularly in third and early fourth density, but in some cases, because of a mind-body-spirit's choices, endures well into fourth and fifth density. Everything experienced is done so in thought, and the only thing a mind does is process thought. How the mind or minds is employed determines the nature of consciousness says experience. Another significant distortion that facilitates consciousness's participation in the foundational and experiential densities is the sixth density creation of intelligent energy. Intelligent energy is a distortion of infinite energy and is found only in the foundational and experiential densities. The issuance and regulation of the flow of intelligent energy to a soul stream is also one of the most significant me mechanisms used by a higher self to guide consciousness through the lower densities while preserving its free will. Intelligent energy is the fuel that energizes lower density consciousness and is sourced directly from a higher self to a soul stream according to its density. Regulation of the appropriate intelligent energy flow to consciousness in a density level is accomplished by a system resembling a series of valves and governors called the chakra system, which we will address in a future episode. The combination of increased free will intoxication, regulated intelligent energy flow 
in creation of the rational logical mind or the foundational and experiential densities are the elements that make it possible for consciousness to successfully explore creation at its most reduced levels. Every pattern of consciousness, also known as a mind-body-spirit, experiencing a foundational or experiential density has the same exact amount of intelligent energy available as every other mind-body-spirit participating in the density. Intelligent energy flows directly from the higher self via a direct and constant connection, but the individual mind-body-spirit has the free will discretion to allocate the energy as it chooses. Free will is paramount in the recipient's discretion of how it will use the energy because in its discretion is the choice of how it will experience creation. Light is another important non-archetypical distortion created by Melchizedek acting upon law or wisdom, similarly to how it acted upon Ra or love to create infinite energy. Light is information and instructs in infinite energy to be a certain way, but light itself is not energy. Creation is implemented as a series of subject-object interactions between various aspects of consciousness, according to its inherent or distorted characteristics. Intelligent infinity can be understood to be white light or truth that incorporates all light from which creation is experienced according to the focus of the observing pattern of consciousness. It is the one infinite creator projected as a concept and experienced from a distorted perspective, which undoubtedly will incorporate only a small portion of the infinite whole. The environment of eighth density is the undiminished light, or truth, of the creator, but viewed through the lens of a unique pattern of consciousness that perceives of itself as independent of the creator. The environment of seventh density is also the creator's light or truth viewed through the lens of a somewhat diminished fractal. From the top to the bottom of the seventh density range of dimensions, the lens through which light is experienced continues to dim from the initial seventh density brightness. Behavioral characteristics of seventh density become more unique as dimensions decline within the density because free will intoxication increases which means the perceptions of separation increases, and the light, which is the same as a density light, is perceived less completely. Sixth density is a fractal of seventh density, and it too is both its own environment and conscious identity. As the dimensions descend within sixth density, even more diverse perspectives emerge that manifest in a panoply of light colors. Sixth density diversity comes from its interactions with other archetypes, both inherent characteristics and distortions, and the accrued experiences of the soul stream densities below, which causes sixth density to be the broadest range of consciousness of all of the densities. The focus of light may vary depending upon the density and the dimension within the density, but the source of the light or information is always the same. All light, truth, information is of or about the five inherent characteristics, and anything other than that is deemed a distraction or distortion. Information on any aspect of the physical world is deemed transient and inconsequential other than how it may pertain to consciousness further understanding of awareness, love, wisdom, unity, or stillness. The only information that is preserved after a lower density incarnation is that which has expanded the understanding of the inherent characteristics, which means that all other information that may have provided academic accomplishments will simply go into the ground with the body because it has no value outside of space-time or beyond the physical incarnation. While light and the variations of light colors are consistent throughout the densities, the intensity of the light is not, but only because of consciousness's inability to perceive it. The white light of third density appears significantly less bright than the white light of fourth density. 
Graduation from one density to the next is measured by the graduating consciousness's ability to appreciate the intensity of the higher density's brilliance. The higher the density experienced by consciousness, the more aligned with the one infinite creator, and the more intense the light. For example, upon the death of a third density mind-body-spirit, it walks the steps of light until it cannot tolerate the light's brilliance because the brilliance of the light of truth becomes too much for them to bear. The light of truth comes into direct conflict with their perceptions or beliefs, and they resist surrendering their degree of perception of separation in favor of the distortions. Where they stop along the steps is the dimension and or density appropriate for their current level of learning, also known as consciousness level. Mind, body, spirits, leaving an incarnation upon the earth, have been walking the steps of light to determine if they are adequately prepared to graduate to fourth density or higher, or will remain in third density for another tour through a density experience to provide them with additional opportunity for learning. Please tune in for the next episode when we describe the development of the physical world, including universes, galaxies, and solar systems. As always, we thank you for listening and wanting to make the world a better place. If you are enjoying Simple Enlightenment and would like to see us continue to offer more information, we encourage you to help us by financially supporting what we are doing. The actual recording is only a small part of the effort to bring you this information, and unfortunately, most of the other stuff takes money. Please enable us to continue providing information and prove the product that we deliver to you by going to podcastenlightenment.org to make a contribution. There you will find free downloads of transcripts of every episode, additional information, suggested readings, and more, all free, of course. Every contribution helps.